Okay, so obviously that didn't work because we don't even have this chain here to call the retract to rest position. That's why the arm is still stood up, right? And then that actually calls the close lid. And so for that reason, we shouldn't even be calling this right here in the arm. Yep, it should actually be connected to retract to rest position. And obviously, what we actually should be working on next is that after we do the move to turn off, we need to engage this switch, right? And we're not going to do it by code, but we're going to be using a collision. So when the pin actually touches the switch, we're going to call the switch toggle, right? And so to do that, so we get rid of that. We need to set up some things uh, with the mesh. So when it comes to collisions in Unreal Engine, you need to have a collision mesh, right? This is different, right? You have to think that there is something called a visual mesh, and then there is the collision mesh, which is much more simplified. We already have that for the switch. We need to create it for the arm tip to have that interaction enabled. So let's open the arm tip and create a box collision. Right, and if you imported it correctly, you shouldn't have any collisions. And so that it gives you the ability to make it yourself. So that's set up, I'm gonna save that. And then this is going to require a change within the uh, settings for the components. We have the switch here. And I don't want this to actually care about collisions. So let's do no collision for the base. That's the thing here. Now for the switch, we're gonna use something called an overlap event. And for that, we need to switch, I'm gonna choose custom here. And because we don't have physics on this, we're just gonna do query only, very hard to pronounce. No physics collision, but it can be used for overlaps as you can see here. Okay, so query only, world dynamic is fine. Now this dictates also this one here, the mouse click. When it's doing this line trace, it's looking for world dynamic types, which is set within the collision and object type. Remember that. If your line trace or whatever overlap isn't working, it's because your type, you're not looking at it correctly. So, okay, for overlap, we need to switch it to overlap. So that's fine on the switch. And then for the arm, we need to do the same. So let's ignore all the, the collisions for the visual mesh, so no collision there. Arm doesn't need collision as well. Uh, we don't need to generate overlap events either for any of these. So I'm gonna go back as well on the switch. No overlap. Compile save, and that's fine. And the arm tip is gonna give it custom. We want query only. No, I can't even pronounce it. World dynamics fine, overlap is cool. We can compile and save this. And I would say because the arm is the one initiating the overlap, we're gonna put, we're gonna use the arm tip, scroll down, and you can get an event called on component begin overlap. So event called when something starts to overlap with this component, which is exactly what we need. So when we it starts to overlap, we need to check if the other actor is of type BP switch. So let's type BP switch. Uh, actually, before we do that, let's just make sure that this is working. So if you print string, we should get an event as soon as that pin or the tip intersects. So let's just watch out for this corner. There you go. We got hello. So it's working now. All right. So hello. We trigger the close lid, which we can't do because what happens is that the lid will start closing and then also the arm will stay up because when it's switched off by the arm we need to wait for it, the retract to rest position to finish and then we close the lid um, but i think it's okay for now uh, okay i think we need to change the, the structure of our code a little bit and so what i'm actually thinking is that this is correct why don't we trigger the retract rest position within the switch by actually seeing who triggered the switch. So as in, if we click using this one, then it means that 
we clicked it, right? But if it's from the arm, it's the arm that uh, did the switch. So that means that in the switch here, we can call this one, yeah. So if it's triggered from here, why don't we create like who? Who, that's fine, I guess. Not a great description. So who, who switched, who switched? Uh, it's not great, but let's just say that if it's actually, no, trigger source. That's so much better. Yeah, that's fine. So if the trigger source is zero, then so we can probably do this, get, and then we do a switch on int. Switch on int just means, you know, we have ports. So if this variable is zero, we do this. And if it's one, we do this. So if it's zero, it's likely that we're doing one of these things where we're jumping back and forth with a switch and we're not letting the arm actually fully extend. I think this is correct, right? So I think that's fine. But if it's one, that means, hmm, okay, actually, we can't set it here. We have to set it in the mouse click. So when we trigger this, let's set the trigger source, set trigger source to zero. And I think we should trigger that before we do switch trigger, switch toggle, sorry. So looking a little ugly there. So I'm going to add in a reroute node here. So it tells us that, hey, we're doing the switch toggle, but it's from the mouse because it's zero. And the arm, we can probably do switch toggle. Basically the same thing as this one. Just take this, only that. Paste, and then that's the same reference here. There you go. Yep, that should connect just fine. And trigger source is number one. So if it's number one, this goes back into the switch. And it knows that actually I need to tell the arm to go back. Retract to rest position. And for that, we need to get the reference. So I'm going to just create a new reference called just arm. Yeah, let's just call this one lid, just lid. Don't call it like that. And that is going to be BP arm. There you go. Need to expose this. So I'm going to compile, save, and then go back into the switch here. It says none, but we're going to select the arm. All right, let's see here. So we have the arm now, great. And we're going to call it to retract to rest position. So I think basically somewhere in here, we're going to have to add in the state machine, right? Because right now we're just going to bypass this, just go directly here, because the state machine really is only useful when we're going to be using multiple switches, which is going to be part, you know, later of the course. So that's fine. And if we follow the logic, after we call this, we need to go back and close the lid. So let's see if we're doing that. So retract to rest position. Right, retract to rest position, great. And our, if arm extended is false, yes, that's when we call close lid. Because we don't need to play this because the, the tip is already like did its thing, right? So let's go and lid and call a close close lid. And I think this is going to work. So that is looking just like exactly, but then we modified it so that this is going to take into account the trigger source, right? And so let's compile and save this. Let's go in here. Let's see. Come on. Whoa. Nice. So now this shouldn't trigger the the arm to come out because we haven't let the lid to fully open. Let's see if this is going to work. Ah, okay, so that didn't work. So what I'm trying to do is as the arm is moving up, if I turn it off, 
I need to cancel the arms movement, but that's going to be later. Um, but basically, within its normal operating window, this is basically working, right? There you go. Perfect. So I think it looks a little bit weird because the arm movement is way too fast. So let's do two. And the switch, maybe the switch movement has just has to be way faster, you know, like eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see. Boom. Of course, because it doesn't have physics, it, it just doesn't look right, right? Um, hmm. Switch anim. Why don't we do auto here? This is probably with it more about the animation. So let's see if this looks a little bit better. I think it looks a little bit better. Yep. That's basically it. Now, why don't we rework the, the node diagram so that we can actually fully understand what's going on, OK? OK, so since we're actually trying to learn how to program properly, let's rework the node diagram so we actually know what's going on right now with the updates that we made to the flow of the system. So obviously, we're not using the state machine. So I'm going to get rid of these cables here. I'm going to move it up somewhere here. And we already, of course, have this trigger source variable. So trigger source of type int. And this thing is used as the parameter input. And just to kind of make notes, why don't we just like put it in here? Is not exactly correct, but trigger source equals zero. There you go. And then this is going to be here, like trigger source one. So that is that. And then let's make it so that we connect it directly and as well as retract to rest position. Add a reroute node somewhere here. Looking a little messy now. So let's see what we can do. Let's move this over. And I think I would like to make some notes. So let's add and add a comment. I'm going to make it a little bit wider. So trigger source used to tell apart who triggered the switch or what triggered the switch. The switch equals by user. One equals by the arm. Okay, so that's got fine. Okay, I don't like this scrolling thing. Can we get rid of that? Okay. That looks okay. So that's going to be about here, this two branches. We can move this up a little bit. This should be the architecture now. So when we're like doing open and close, open and close with the trigger source zero, we can constantly kind of keep it bouncing without triggering this thing. So that's why the arm doesn't suddenly come up. But if we fully let the arm open, we let this trigger and then that goes in here and does the switch trigger source is one. And so it doesn't go here, but it goes here. Right. And then after that, we let it close the lid. So yeah, that's that's fine, I think. Yeah, and, and the issue that we faced was that when we let the lid open before the the arm has the option to fully come up, we press off. And then what happens is that it just immediately turns it on, completely messes up. So what we need to do, obviously, to fix this bug is to probably have this also connected to directly to the switch. But it has to be context aware as in it knows that the lid is open. And so when we do in that state and we're flipping the switch constantly, we should allow the arm to do the same thing as the lid, right? Just keep going like that. And those are like one of the things that I talked about, which is like the kid proofing and the idiot proofing. 
All right, so we're almost at the end of the single switch implementation of our system. Now I'm gonna tell you something that maybe you're thinking about and it's that this course was definitely marketed as a theory-based course, but at the end, it's very much a practical course because I think the natural inevitable conclusion of all this you know, learning coding is that it just has to be done from practice. A lot like riding a bicycle, right? So you can ride a bicycle not because you know the exact biomechanics of how you ride a bicycle, right? That's not the thing that gives you the ability, right? It's that you actually get on the bike and you start pedaling and, th and there's a process of adaptation from your brain and your muscles. And that's a lot like how programming works. And so think of this course like starting out your reps in the gym of coding, right? And you're gonna keep doing your reps after this course and there's gonna be a moment where everything clicks and so don't be frustrated if not everything makes sense for you. Uh, what's gonna happen is that as you keep the reps in, it, with hindsight, everything will make sense. And that's how my personal experience was learning coding uh, in high school. And so look, if you wanna achieve that point in your coding learning journey, I think you should keep learning. So click on the next video.